I've been watching Congress waste time on procedures for a very long time now. If something just needs a quick decision, you better believe that Congress will have a dozen procedures to follow which will delay that decision until tomorrow. Of all the procedures in the United States Congress with which I disagree, there's one which I've come to absolutely hate. The Senate filibuster. To me, it symbolizes everything wrong with Congress and by proxy, Washington, D.C. Now that's worth some roasted opinions, isn't it? Just in case there's someone out there watching this who doesn't know what a filibuster is, this is a speech used to prevent passage of legislation by delaying the debate. This tactic has been around for a long, long time. Cato, the noted Roman senator, made use of filibustering to continue debates into the night, since under the rules of the Roman Senate, all business must conclude at dusk. The UK Parliament uses filibustering, although not in the way that Americans commonly understand. All debate on a bill in Parliament must be germane to the bill in question, but any number of interventions on points of order may be taken. Both of these filibusters are shorter than American filibusters, as the rules of these bodies either limit the length of the session or forbid any measure from being debated simultaneously to the measure in question, both features which exist in the American filibuster. In order to stop the debate on a bill before the U.S. Senate, a procedural vote called a cloture vote must occur. The threshold for cloture to pass is 60 votes, meaning that if 41 senators oppose cloture, then the vote fails and debate continues indefinitely. Since the Senate can schedule debate on a separate measure for a different time during the day, the filibuster can be used to delay passage of a particular bill without delaying passage of other legislation. If you think that's a situation ripe for abuse, just wait. It gets worse. You see, just threatening filibuster is usually enough to force the majority to take a census of support for the bill in order to ensure that cloture can be invoked. If the majority cannot poll at least 60 senators who will vote for cloture, then the measure is effectively defeated. Even if they can, then the minority can filibuster every separate vote on the bill, including every vote on every proposed amendment that requires a separate cloture vote for every amendment and every procedure. Now, there are a few measures which require a supermajority. Convictions on impeachments, expelling members of Congress, Overriding vetoes, ratifying treaties, and ratifying constitutional amendments all require a two-thirds supermajority of the Senate. Everything else technically requires a simple majority of 51 according to the Constitution. But the Constitution also guarantees that the Senate has the right to set its own rules. They set Rule 22 to ensure that it would take 60 votes to close debate and enshrine the filibuster and now everything needs at least 60 votes in favor of it to pass in the Senate. What this means is that the Senate, who is supposed to be a more deliberative body, is effectively the logjam on practically every measure in Congress. Now my libertarian friends and family might think that's a good idea. Fewer bills passed mean fewer laws, right? Well, I don't think that's a good idea. It slows down critical legislation, including emergency measures. Case in point, the stimulus bills. The House of Representatives have passed the HEROES Act. The Senate is considering the HEALS Act. The HEALS Act allocates $1.1 trillion in spending. The HEROES Act allocates $3.4 trillion. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi wants the HEROES Act passed as is. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell does not. Which one has the power in this situation? Neither, actually. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer does, since the Democratic Congress in the Senate has more than 40 members. So long as Chuck and Nancy are acting in concert, then Mitch faces an uphill battle just to get the Heels Act to a vote. Because of this, Nancy can claim that Mitch is holding up the fifth stimulus bill in press conferences, and until and unless the House and the Senate are controlled by the same party, this kind of situation is always possible. Back during the Obama presidency, speakers Paul Ryan and John Boehner did roughly the same thing when they presided over the House in roughly the same situation. 
When the House Majority Party is the Senate Minority Party, the Speaker of the House and the Senate Minority Leader can prevent the Senate Majority Party from passing legislation they oppose. Maybe that might explain just a bit of the reason why Congress is held in such contempt as a whole, while individual members are held in high regard in their constituencies. Overall, Congress is sitting on around a minus 40 approval rating, yet there are members who have been in that branch of government for decades. Vote the bums out, people cry. Yet the bums they're referring to are rarely their own representatives and senators. We don't need to vote elected officials out of office as much as we need for the filibuster to be voted out of existence. Imagine, if you will, a Senate that didn't need a supermajority to get past every step of the legislative process. A Senate that can move forward with their own legislative agenda instead of waiting for the House to send over theirs. A Senate which could send bills to the House, too. A Senate, in other words, which would function the way that the Constitution says that it's supposed to function. Imagine Mitch McConnell being able to meet Nancy Pelosi as an equal rather than have Chuck Schumer show up to every meeting and tell the Senate Majority Leader what was going to happen. Imagine the Senate Majority Leader telling the Speaker of the House privately that either she negotiated with him or her bill was dead on arrival. Imagine that finance bills could be stripped of all artifice and writers, passed and sent back to the House with just the items germane to the subject of the original bill included in the Senate version. Imagine that a bill could be less than a thousand pages long. Wishful thinking, huh? It's possible. It just needs to become a campaign issue. Okay, yeah, you can stop booing. Yes, I know that conservatives have supported the filibuster traditionally. I also know that the filibuster is used to preserve the rights of the minority in the Senate to avoid the tyranny of the majority. But hear me out. Right now, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer control Congress. If Mitch McConnell sides with Donald Trump against them, then they blame Mitch and the GOP for holding up legislation. That, in effect, nullifies the GOP majority in the Senate, making the battle against Donald Trump's measures between Trump and Pelosi. Never mind the fact that the GOP holds the majority in the Senate to go with the Oval Office. It's just the bad orange man against the Washington establishment. And Mitch can't do much to help but wring his hands and cash his paychecks. Pelosi doesn't even negotiate with McConnell. She negotiates with Steve Mnuchin and Mark Meadows. But Mitch McConnell and the Senate majority can change that in a day. All that they have to do is to push forward the Heals Act. When Schumer tries to filibuster it, McConnell needs to call for a cloture vote. The cloture vote will fail, of course, and then McConnell can invoke the nuclear option. Rule 20 in the Senate rules. It allows the Senate to amend their rules in the middle of a debate by simple majority. If this option is invoked, an immediate vote on the amendment to the rules must occur. There is no debate on that vote, so there is no filibuster on a Rule 20 procedure. Once McConnell uses Rule 20 to challenge Rule 22, everything stops in the Senate until the matter is settled. At that point, Senator McConnell has raised a point of order that the vote on cloture should be a simple majority. The President of the Senate, Mike Pence, rules that under Rule 22, cloture is a three-fifths majority. Senator McConnell then appeals that decision to the Senate as a whole on constitutional grounds, and the Senate immediately votes on what Rule 22 should say. If the GOP can get just 51 votes that cloture is a simple majority vote, then the filibuster is defanged. Cloture limits debate to just 30 hours after the cloture vote, after which the measure has to go to a final vote. The only way Senator Schumer could use a filibuster at that point would be to initiate several filibusters to slow up the passage of the Heals Act, which would effectively flip the script on the stimulus debate. It would become obvious to everyone that the Democrats in Congress, particularly Chuck Schumer, are blocking passage of the Heals Act, which makes plain this all-or-nothing, my-way-or-the-highway approach to legislation. Why, that's unprecedented, Roast. You can't just do away with the filibuster. Yes, we can. In 1890, Senator Nelson Aldrich, a Republican, threatened to do just that when the Democrats in the Senate were filibustering a federal elections bill. Aldrich's plan was exactly what I've just described and would have established cloture as a simple majority vote. The Democratic senators mustered just enough support to win a majority vote to table the bill, which is why Nelson Aldrich didn't get to invoke his plan to break the filibuster. The federal elections bill in question died in that session of Congress, which is frankly unconscionable as it was meant to end the Jim Crow voting laws once and for all. Think of it. Without filibusters, government shutdowns would be less likely. 
Congress would be passing legislation and negotiating with each other instead of critical issues being decided by executive orders and judicial review. Measures couldn't be stalled in Congress without serious repercussions to the party who is actually stalling the measures. Failure to negotiate in Congress might even be rewarded with members being replaced for their lack of effort to pass laws. There's always going to be bickering in Congress. If the filibuster is ended, then at least the bickering will become more pointed and more useful. Write your senator. Tell them that you want them to amend Rule 22 to allow a simple majority cloture vote. Tell them that you're tired of the Senate sitting on legislation instead of voting on it. No vote but those named in the Constitution should require a supermajority. And no argument is going to convince me otherwise.